Hi, I'm Jody Vance, and this is Bar Smart. What is Bar Smart, you ask? Well, it's an attitude, a new style of service, and if it's done right, it's a license to print money. How do I know? Well, I've spent a ton of money and time being entertained by the man who pioneered this program. Of course, I'm speaking of Scott Young. I remember the first time I saw Scott wow the crowd at the Roxy. As a matter of fact, I think I was one of that crowd, and I knew right then and there that I'd be back. Scott and his instructors travel internationally, speaking at trade shows, putting on seminars, and judging worldwide competitions. Since 1994, Scott has taken the business of great service to a new level, and the fun has only just begun. You may know him as the creator of Extreme Bartending, the video training series that shows you exactly how to put this winning formula to work for you and your staff. But Bar Smart has always been about much more than just flipping bottles. It's about taking care of the customer, having them come back soon, stay longer, and walk away talking about what a great experience they had. Now, if you ask Scott what his company is all about, he'll tell you it's about spreading ideas, getting people thinking about how they can do their job better. The Flair Bartenders Association gave Scott an award for having the most impact internationally as a trainer. Now, I can go on and on about this young man, but I'd rather let you watch this video and decide for yourself. All I know is in the last 10 years, I've watched as his bar had a lineup while other wells in the club stand empty. Proof's in the pouring, and this is Scott Young. Hi, I'm Scott Young. What you're about to see is a little bit different than any other training video you may have seen. I don't know if you've ever seen a seminar or been to a presentation, but I've often found that the instructor is very knowledgeable on the subject, but they stand up and they talk to you or at you for an hour. Maybe they read out of a book and never bother to ask you what you think. Well, I never liked that, and we don't do it that way. We want this to be intimate and interactive. There are very few right or wrong, black or white things in this industry, and we'll discuss them. But for the most part, they are shades of gray. Now, this is a big world out there. This service industry is everywhere, and I can't just tell you what's going to work in your area, but we can give you some new ideas and hopefully get you thinking about what will. Whether you're watching this video alone or with a group, it's not really designed to be watched in one sitting. It's not a movie. So stop it once in a while, rewind it, make sure you catch all the ideas. Our goal is to stimulate thoughts and discussions, agreements and disagreements, creativity and solutions, ideas, that's what we're all about. You picked a great industry to be involved in, we want to excite you about it. There's all sorts of opportunities out there for the right kind of person, the kind of person who's going to care enough about what they do to think about how to do it better, and then actually go out and do something about it. Welcome. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about suggestive selling. Uh, what is it? Uh, why do we want to do it? Does it make a difference? Uh, what are some good ways to go about in doing that? Um, first of all, what is suggestive selling? What do I mean by that? Would you like Up fries sell. with that? Right, fries. <laughs> okay, Andrea. Upselling. Upselling. Can you describe that, please? I'm ordering a double instead of a single. Right. Suggesting a more expensive drink, a premium. Right. So the the idea of this is to increase our sales. Right, plain, plain and simple. Sheila had a good comment. <laughs> you're joking, but it's very true. Well, you know, do you like shooters with that? Or no, but say or the original you like fries one. with that. <laughs> Excellent, McDonald's. Or, or McDonald's. Super size that for you. Exactly, yeah. it's a huge thing, right? Suggestive selling works, right? Big companies do it because it works and it makes them money. Plain and simple. This is one of the most important sections that, that we talk about in our seminars. This is one of the big reasons that companies hire us to come out and, and train their staff. Right, to get them to understand how important this concept is. Um, so suggest selling, upselling. The idea is to create higher sales. Uh, increase your average check. Right? Just a little bit, every customer can make a big, big difference. Right? Okay. Now what are, what are some things that you can suggest to sell, you can upsell? Dave? Definitely wine. Glass of wine, half Ooh, liter bottle. That's a great one. Or even like a different type of wine. Like if some right. people say, what kind of wine do you have? And I'll say the house whites, but then I prefer, I like, I like a different wine, you know what I mean? So I'll right. say, this one's really good. And they'll go, right. oh, okay, well, it's a night out. Let's do it. So they'll... That's a great point. One thing with suggestive selling is that you can do it in every bar. Every single level of bar, you can do this. Right? And the worst thing someone's going to say is, say no. Fine, I can accept no. Right? I got lots of no's. Right? Understand that you're offering a service to somebody and giving them options. Right? So wine is great, like you said, from a, like a half carafe to a, to a full one, um, from like the house wine to a really nice wine. Right? They're asking you for suggestions often, and wine is a big thing, because not a lot of people know a lot about wines. Let's be realistic. 
Yeah, we all want to have it. Yeah, give me a nice Bordeaux. Nice smooth. Well, like, I don't know. <laughs> right? And most people don't. Right? So if you can make them you know, feel like they know something about it, that's a really important thing, especially in a higher class place. But you can suggest something that's higher priced that is a better, more quality wine. And that's what I think is a good thing about suggestive selling. There's two ways to look at this. Well, you just want to try to sell them the higher priced item. OK, yes, because we want to make higher sales. But why else? I believe that if you generally, the higher price item is the higher quality item. Right? And I want to give my customers great quality things, things that I recommend, things that I want. You also want to educate them on products. Because we work in a specific industry that most people don't, we have uh, access to a variety of products that no one else will ever see. Exactly. And so we can say, hey, you like this. Have you tried this? And it may be, you know, it's, it's 50 cents more or whatever. But I think it makes that product, puts that product to shame. Yeah. That may be their, their favorite, but then suddenly they have a new favorite. Maybe it's a little bit more. Maybe even it's a little bit less. It's a new product, and they come to you again with the trust and the whole. You're not just trying exactly. to increase your per person average. You're trying to give them quality so that they come back to you again and again. Exactly. And every time you do this, it's another way of you making a connection with that customer. right? Because, again, most bartenders do this badly. They don't do it all. They stand there, and they wait. And they go, give me a beer. OK, what kind? Canadian. OK, there you go. Right. Well, wonderful. Right. But what, you know, did you really tailor their order? Did you have a chance to interact? Well, not really. Right. And it really gets into uh, uh, importance when you talk about other things other than like a beer. Right. But I mean, anything you want to, maybe there's a special on for Canadian. Great. Well, you know, let's try to suggest that, to present that. Right. No, Dave. I got another one because uh, type, I'm in the food industry as well, so I serve food. So right. we have our desserts on a, a view, Viewmaster. So I'll hand that to him first. Really? Really? You could do it with shooters or whatever, specialty what drinks or whatever. That is so That's, cool. That is one of those little idea. kids things? Yeah, yeah, and then you just have yeah. the film put in. and then edit that right out. It's like a private thing. Yeah, we're, we're keeping that. Ah, here, that we go, here we go. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so like at the very beginning of the meal, I'll hand it to him and I'll say, this is our desserts. I think dessert's the best part of the meal. Why don't you decide what you'd like now so you have room. You know, maybe you could even eat dessert first. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dessert is the last thing, but it's right. the first thing that I sell them on or try to, you know, the dessert. And I so love most that. of the time, <laughs> so. Hey, good for you. Is that your idea? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. That was on me. Woo. Giddy up. Giddy up. Totally upselling, you know. You know, and I bet you could do it. You know, whatever you got to sell, I'm buying. You know, because you're going to make it sound great. I mean, that's a great presentation of it. Wonderful. All right. Okay, what other things can we suggest of sell? Mark? I like to uh, upsell. Well, it's not, even, it's not always even upsell. I just like anything with juice in it, because then I get to pick up a bottle, and I get to play with the bottle. And most of the time, a lot of times, it is more expensive, you know, like vodka 7 to vodka orange juice. Right. Uh, even, like, and I'm sick of pouring tequilas. Like, you know, try a killer watermelon. Try something different. Like, let me play with you. Right. And, you yeah. know. Definitely. Clint. Shooters are easy, easy upsell. I mean, uh, when one gentleman came into my club specifically, he ordered a beer, got him to drink a shooter with it. He then wanted his friends to do it and his other friends to yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. And eventually he was buying 40 shooters at a time so all of his friends could do it. And he was going round after round of That's shooters. most people don't want to drink a shooter by themselves. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's social. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it creates really a party. Point. Also, the thing on, on shooters. So first of all, let's backtrack for one second. Suggestive sell cocktails. Right? Rather than just double a vodka soda. Give that and say, see, you guys, you guys are good. You guys are good. Double premium cocktails. Yeah. Yeah. There, there. Give that. Where's the cookies? Where's the cookies? Who's, Who's got, got the shorty? Oh. <laughs> All right, excellent. Excellent. Okay, so we're back to Mark. Talked about suggestive selling cocktails from regular highball, right? Because you're adding juice and we, you know, it's a great way to do performance stuff because you're doing things with juice, right? But you're adding value, you're adding taste, right? And you're getting more money for it, right? So it's a higher profit margin, right? Then Clint said, shooters. Well, shooters are great, especially juice shooters, right? Because you have different tastes. 
know, different colors, different tastes that you can suggest. Really good thing. We're supposed to know what we're doing here. We sh should be able to give people options. Right? It's a big thing. And Don, you had a really good point of, you know, people don't like drinking shooters alone. Right? So it's a big joint thing. Right? And a lot of people want to buy drinks for people, especially in, you know, in, a, in a club atmosphere rather than just sitting at a table in a restaurant. Um, they're able to sort of meet people that way. You know, be friendly. Oh, buy, you know, buy those girls or buy you know, this group of shooters or buy, buy the bar around. It happens. Right? And it's much easier to buy someone a shooter, especially a juice shooter with a different taste that you know everybody's going to like, right? than it is to buy a, a drink. Because you know what? Uh, you know, Sheila drinks a very specific drink. Right? And you know, so does Michael. He drinks Coors Light. Right? Everybody has their own specific taste for a Heineken or this kind of cocktail. Right? It's very difficult to get the right drink. And some people just won't drink it. You know, if it's not their drink, they won't drink it. Shooters are different. Yeah. It's easier to please with shooters. It's also easier to please the masses. Whereas the girl, a guy and a girl will walk up and he's like, I want two tequilas. She's like, I'm not drinking that. Or vice versa. And they go, you go, well, why don't I make you a couple things that you can both drink and you'll both enjoy. We're in. Okay. And you're done. Get they come, and they come back and back. And it's done in three seconds. They shoot that. It's done. They need something else right exactly. there and there. It's, yeah. a, it's a taster. They yeah. don't think of that as a drink. Appetizer. Exactly. Huge. Last night at the bar, Scotty. Sorry? Just, it was one of the things you, you brought up in a course was people don't always think of shooters as a drink. It's like, oh, last night, oh, I was so hammered. I had right. like <laughs> six beers and, you know, four Heinekens. Oh, yeah, the shooters. Oh, yeah, and I did eight shooters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People right. always forget about that. Oh, yeah. right? So it's an easy upsell, an extra. <laughs> Jerry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. The same thing goes for, like, doubles. Um, if you Huge. set the tone early. Exactly. What are you drinking is a common question asked by people in a bar. It's a great icebreaker. Hey, man, what are you drinking? Oh, I'm drinking a double rum and Coke. The guy might have just wanted a rum and Coke, but I'm drinking a double Bacardi Coke all of a sudden. Then you say people love to buy drinks for, for each other. Hey, man, what are you drinking? I'm double Bacardi Coke. I mean, who's not going to want somebody to buy them that? Yeah. <laughs> right? Fair enough. But one point you just made that's really important is that you get them early. Yeah, start it off. The start best off. time to suggest a sell is early in the night. So you can establish what they're drinking, right? And all of a sudden, you know, next when you're busy, they come back, you know, another round, done. Yeah. Right? All of a sudden, I don't have to take any time with that. I can now even serve a big crowd faster because I don't have to wait till you get to the bar. I can serve, make your drink with these five other people's drinks, right? If I can start you a tab, give me a credit card, huge way to be faster, right? But that's great. I can get to you quicker. I know what you're drinking. And all of a sudden, you're drinking that. You're drinking that for the entire night. That's going to make a difference. Sheila. Jerry just did something. I don't know if he realized it, but for upselling, I don't know what the bar brand is, but if you say Bacardi and Coke as opposed to rum and Coke, Coke, if you say Crown Royal and water, <clears throat> if, you, if you say that loud enough, someone might go, hey, wait a minute, <clears throat> I like Stoli's better than that. And yeah. it'll make other people order up. Right. Totally. That's the next thing we're going to talk about. Give you one second, right? Okay. What is premiums, right? Premium, like a Bacardi or a Stolichnaya or an Absolute, or I mean, there's all sorts of different kinds. How much, how much money do these companies put in to getting their name out there? Mm -hmm. Let them help you. You know, help, help me, help you, help them, <laughs> help them, help me. A lot of times, though, too, as a customer, you don't know how little it is for the premium. Right, it's, it's people, not that people much. People don't have an idea. Like I, I remember, I never had an idea, and I don't like certain kinds of vodka or gin, and I thought, well, maybe it's, and then you watch someone pay for it. So if someone says Bacardi and Coke, and you go, hey, wait, that was 525. Mine was 485. This is shit rum. That's good. Sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it, it raises it as well, too. Exactly. That's great. But Jump out of your chair. Don't Let's know, people don't know well items. People don't know potters. People yeah. don't come up and say, can I have a potter's rum? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Know. right. So if you say to them, yeah. if you right. say, yes. what preference do you have, they're always going to use the premium because yeah. they don't know the right. non-premium names. They're they going to say, I want Tancray. They're exactly. going to say, I want Beefeater or I want Bombay. Or, Bombay. Or, Bombay. or else if someone asks for a scotch. <laughs> Yeah. Scotch is the best one because it's always, oh, I'll have a Glen Fiddick or I'll, you know, whatever. Exactly. They always come up and with it's the really easy to sell a double on a Scotch, too. Oh, yes, yeah. doubles always. Totally. Because it looks so little, right? Yeah. They, on the rocks or, or neat, nothing. I got one story that I want you to, to walk away with. When did you start drinking? Re realistically, when was the first time you had your drink? 14. 14. And where did you get the liquor? Dad's. <laughs> In your dad's liquor cabinet. Exactly. In your parents' liquor cabinet. Well, what do they buy? Premiums. When people buy dr buy the stuff for their home bar, they, don't buy they buy the good stuff, yeah. right? So you're drinking all the really name brands, right? All the all the brands, 
all the brands that spend a lot of money trying to get their name out there. I tell you, the things that I tell my, you know, my porter to always stock, I never want to run out of, uh, yet if I should, you know, give these guys plugs, uh, is the, is the main things. Around here, I, Crown Royal Rye is huge, uh, or CC, you know, is really big. Um, Bacardi is really huge, or Appleton, really, really big. Um, uh, Stoli or Absolute, you know, is really, really big. Um, you know, things like that, I just do not want to run out of, no matter what. Tanqueray, around here, Bombay is doing really well lately. But you know what? You guys are going to know your own markets. Every place is different. I don't know, right? But pick the main ones and never run out of that because if you use that name brand, you know, use Bacardi. Would you like Bacardi with, you know, Bacardi Coke? Great. Double. Excellent. Huge. Use the name that they're spending all the money into because they're like, oh, yeah. And most people don't know that that's not what they're getting. They expect, oh, that's, that's the only kind of rum that they know. That's what I was just going to say also. When someone does ask for a rum and coke, don't just give them the house brand. If they just ask for a rum and coke, okay, well, I'll give you a rum and coke. Then here you go. It's yeah. Bacardi. I will automatically pick up a good bottle and go, would you like Bacardi? Right? And they're like, yeah. Right? You know, Crown Royal. Is there anything else? <laughs> no. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> well, you know, right? But I will have it in my hand and I will present it to them. And this is very important. When you're doing this, it's more than just verbally. Right? I'm using my body, I'm getting in, you know, I'm using my eyes, right? I'm using my voice, and I'm presenting to him. Like, boom, I got four ways to do it. It's right here. You know? Jerry. Sorry. Uh, the uh, small bar at Babalu, there's a shelf that sort of comes over the bartender's shoulder. And uh, you were saying about being efficient and setting up your, your bar as well. Right. First thing I do whenever I work that bar is I put one premium bottle of everything that I have in my well right there on my shoulder. So when people walk up, yep. I'm standing right there. And they can say, oh, yeah, Bombay, and then there's Crown Royal, and then there's, you know, they're all right there. Exactly. And just point to them. You know, it's pre presentable. Ian, did you have a point? Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, easiest way I ever found to upsell premiums was I would just leave. Um, I'm, a, I'm a well rat by admission, and uh, I had uh, Bacardi Stoli, those things, kind of things, on ice. And someone asked me for a rum and coke, and I would just pick up a Bacardi bottle and go, is Bacardi your brand? Because a yes Good. answer, a yes answer means I just poured him Bacardi. A no answer is going to be no. Actually, uh, Captain Morgan Spiced is my brand. Okay, so okay, I'll grab you that. I like then. that. Yeah, I, I've never done that, but I like that. I like that. Just, is your brand assume, right? And it's in your hand. I have a brand because they do. Good. And they'll know what it is. So. That's an excellent point. Similar to uh, both what Ian and Regan said, uh, mine is what's your favorite. Because, as Reagan said, they don't know the bar stock. Right. So you know, I like that, go. but give them an option. Because what's your favorite is an open-ended question. Uh, I want a yes or a no, and yeah. yeses come much yeah. easier. Usually you have it in your hand. Well, exactly. You say, totally sure. recommend that. Um, now, one thing I want to get to is that um, saying yes is a proven fact that it's easier for people to say yes than it is to say no. Right? People don't want to be argumentative. They don't want to have a discussion on things. It's easier to say yes, especially when they're relaxed and having fun and had a few drinks and, you know, and keep in mind of who you are to them. You are the leader, right? You're up there. You're supposed to be the one that everybody, you know, wants to be friends with and has some knowledge, right? They don't want to disagree with you, right? So you have some power here to use. Hopefully you don't abuse it, right? Has anybody heard of uh, Jim Sullivan? Jim Sullivan and Phil Roberts uh, wrote a book called Service That Sells. Exceptional book. I re totally recommend getting it. Um, we'll probably be selling it on our website um, before long. Service That Sells. Exceptional book. Right? And then he had something. Jim Sullivan, uh, I was a really great speaker. I've had the chance to, to watch him uh, at one of the nightclub and bar shows. Exceptional. Met, had met him. Great guy. He started out, I believe, as a psychologist. And he ended up having a number of restaurants. And uh, now he consults, does a lot of things. He has something called the Sullivan Head Nod. Right? You know, oh, yeah. would you like Bacardi? Right? It's a very subtle. Right? You know, would you like Bacardi? You know, this is not a you're getting sleepy. <laughs> right? But it's just really subtle. Would you like Bacardi there? Yeah. Try it. It works. Yeah. Right? And keep in mind that you're not doing anything bad here. You're not, you know, having some sort of subliminal message of telling somebody to go kill somebody. I mean, this is trying to guide them into having a better night and into something that you believe in. You know, a better brand. Right? Very powerful, very powerful. Chris? And what you said earlier when you hook them early, because as soon as it's in their heads, later on, when everything is out of their heads, they still remember what they're drinking. 
Spicardi Coke. Exactly. You know? yeah. They don't remember their names. Well, then we want to serve them. Yeah. Well, no. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's the first thing they're going to remember when they want another drink. Loaded or not. I didn't think we were all being PC. She's swearing over there. <laughs> but it's the first thing, and it's the thing that stays. Yeah. You say about being subliminal, well, that's what you're doing, really, you in are. effect, is, is putting that power of suggestion in their head. Definitely. Better brand. Michael. I like to use, uh, I think it's obviously important to educate yourself and your bar team on the products and the knowledge and have the visual display and everything, but I've always liked to use certain uh, almost one-liners or go-to lines that you could go to when you're busy or something, right. things like, uh, uh, Ryan, Ryan Ginger, please, that's my Christmas drink, Cr double crown and ginger, you're going for it? Yeah. Um, things like, uh, anytime anybody at my bar has ever ordered a kokanee, I upsell them to a beer called Pilsner or Cal, first original Pilsner, and I go on a story about it. It was written in the Czechoslovakia. You know, the guy, the brewmaster left and started a uh, brewery called... I'll Bud take Bud. it. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Give me two. Give me two. The, guy, the, the brewmaster left and started a company called Budweiser. And there it is. I mean, that's the first original pistol. A lot of people don't understand this, and it's an easy upsell. It's like to yeah. have some go-to words. Or Bacardi, does anybody really know where Bacardi's made? Cuba? It used to be not in yeah. It was in Cuba. Yeah, just little things, like little go-to yeah. lines I use, um, which I find is, is putting the onus on the guest yeah. to order the product. Um, another real quick one about in regards to food. We're recently at the Palomino Bar that I'm working. We have a, a huge milestones restaurant down below us, so a lot of people come up during the dinner turn, and it's a holding area. And our uh, our, our job was up to upsell more appetizers. Right. Um, so we started rather than just so here's a menu. I'll come back. Our, Here's a menu if you'd like to order something. We started flipping to the appetizer page right. and saying, here's the appetizer page. I'll come back in a couple minutes and see what you'd like to order. Nice. So I've already put the onus on the guest. Oh, I'm supposed to read this? You know? Right. I'm, I'm telling them, start reading it, and I'll come back in a couple minutes and take your order. And I just found, boom, appetizer shot up. Just putting the onus on them. Because everybody Huge. sat in a bar and said, oh, menu, yeah. Kind of looked at it or whatever. But right. it's opened up. It's there in front of me. I'm supposed to read this? Oh, yeah, I'll take some of that place. Nice. Thank you very much. Cool. Actually, I got a cool question. With that, you go one step further, and you actually when I very first started serving, I had my first manager said to me, a good server can actually tell a customer what to order. Sure. And that is completely true. He um, does. It is. <laughs> You'd, even one more open, as opposed to opening the appetizer menu, you say, you want some dry garlic ribs. Right. You know, you suggest to them and they say, yes. Signature. That's it. just like you said, yes yeah. is the easiest thing. And people don't want to sit there and decide. Nobody likes to make a decision. Totally. I don't like making a decision. I would much prefer for my bartender to say, Hey, here's the killer Kool-Aid. Sure, you're gonna, you go. you're gonna love it. You're gonna oh, love yeah. this. You're gonna, what kind of taste then, you like? This kind of, right, you're gonna love this. And just do it. Yeah, I think exactly. it's important Take it to, off to, them. to try to stay away from to saying, what can I get for you to drink? We all say it, I've said it in the past, but it's, I think it's important to, to, to give them a signature item. Like, right. would you like to have a, a Pilsner or Cal, perhaps? Or exactly. can I offer you a uh, Crantini tonight? Right. It's giving them something to get in their head as opposed to, what exactly. would you like a drink? Uh, trying to change it up a bit. Right, now we know somebody I have in common. Uh, Kevin. What's Kevin's last name? Bernie. Bernie, thank you. Uh, Kevin took, took our seminar many years ago, and great guy, great bartender, super personality. And uh, he really wasn't into the flipping a whole lot. He did a little bit, but just a little bit mild, you know, but he keyed on a couple things. Do you want, do you want to tell a story? Went through your course. I put him through the course, and he came back, and he was all excited. He had never really thought about the upsell of premium, and I worked with with him behind the bar, and for three weeks straight, he did not, he did not sell a regular. It was all premium. He went three weeks straight with, with selling premiums, and he was really dumbfounded. He just every night, he thought to himself, "Why wasn't I doing that before? I just average my my average guest checks come up like fifty cents per person per cover, or whatever, just because he was offering the premiums, and he was really excited about it. for three weeks." Uh, he sold nothing but premiums. It was all premiums coming at his bar. And he was talking, he ran out of stuff. And he yeah, literally. do other liquor orders. Well, and he literally told people that I'm on my, it's two and a half weeks. <laughs> I have not sold a well bred. You're having McCarty. So really? Been, yeah, I mean, being a little aggressive, obviously, sure. but. Uh, right. But that worked for him, you know, in that, in that establishment. But great. Utilize your opportunities by, you know, suggested things to people and things that they're going to like. Yeah. If you have a suggested seller, like, um, for instance, Milestones is famous for their Bellinis, <clears throat> and it's probably the best Bellini out there right now. You know, the original. The original, yeah, the original. Then suggestively sell that to the customer. You know, we have a, we have a drink, we have called the sugar, obviously, but it only comes as a double. Yeah. So a double sugar, and it's easy to make, there's a little bit of flair involved, and it's the only place in the city you can get it. 
quite literally. Yeah. Um, you know, you're not going to go to another nightclub or the Roxy and ask for a uh, double purple onion. Yeah. Whatever, you know. Well, this every great do. company is famous purple for onion. something. For <laughs> something. And if you can back that's your product, product. Well, that's your favorite product. Yep. Right. And you make it the best for anybody else. Why exactly. wouldn't you want to sell it? Exactly. Yeah. Present it. And, and, and take that one step further. Invent a shooter that you, as a bartender, only know the recipe for. Mm. You know? And maybe that customer will keep coming back to you. That's not a bad idea. Three Get on to this. What I really believe is having specials. You know, having a couple specials, especially a cocktail and a shooter special. But I love um, some sort of a sign, like, I don't know if you can, you can get a shot of this. Um, you know, specials of the day and on a chalkboard. Well, you know, in a busy bar, right, I want people to have made up their mind before they come up to me. Right? Now, yes, if they don't know, I will guide them through things. And because I, hopefully I, I will think and anticipate, it will go quicker and that will go well. However, there's things that you can do to make up their minds, right? Having specials, having you know, drink, you know, drink uh, cards on the table, um, different options. You give them uh, ideas and, and guide them into what you want them to be drinking. Um, there's a uh, special story about uh, a guy out of Toronto many years ago. Uh, actually, Vance Campbell, who originally brought me into the Roxy, uh, told me this story. and I always remembered it. Um, sell them strawberries. And this guy, I guess, took over a, a, a hotel. He did big brunches. And he looked at their menu, and he saw these great desserts, but they weren't really selling. Look at the numbers, and you know, why aren't they selling? Well, same kind of idea of what, of what you do out there with the, with the pictures. Uh, he, will, he decided to put them on a cart, right? And they're beautiful, you know, well-displayed, you know, fresh strawberries. And he had a, a person walk around the tables at, at dessert time and said, you know, roll around, would you like some lovely fresh strawberries for dessert? Oh, they're nice. Right? And all of a sudden, it's right there, right? And if it's right in front of somebody, it looks so good. Well, maybe just one, right? Especially when people are out there to have fun and relax. It's easy to say, wow, maybe just, just one. Give me one of those. Well, okay, I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm on vacation. I'm on my, my free time, right? Their sales just shot through the roof, right? Simple, simple thing, right? Let them know what you have. Right, Andrew? Get them excited about it and make a game out of it. I always go up to a table and I'll go, what time is it? And I'll look at their watch and go, shooter time! <laughs> shooter time! time. <laughs> well, like, whoa, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Exactly. And then you keep them going. You keep doing them, buy them around so they'll keep going. Right. Excellent. You know, get them excited and be involved with them, right? You know? Yeah. Uh, Michael touched on a really good point, which was assuming that the order's already there. And that, like in saying that he put the menu out in front, and I'll be back in a second to find out what you'd like. Not yeah. if you'd like something, but what you'd like. So you're serving someone their, their first round, and you've upsold them to a double crown Coke. Right. And you say, and what type of shooters did you want with that? And they go, gee, uh, what do you want? You know, and, they, and undoubtedly right. what happens all the time is they turn to their party, and they haven't thought about it at all. But there's three or four people, and they turn and go, what type of shooters did we want? And then you jump in and go, well, we have you know, killer watermelons on special. You know, this amount of money, great. You're going to love them. They're tasty. Come on. All right. Yeah. Excellent. You're getting excited about it. Andrew, thanks. Champagne is a huge upsell, yes. too. Yeah. Especially when someone's having a special occasion, exactly. and you can go up to $250 for a bottle. What's a special, what, you know, what's the occasion tonight? I ask that all the time. I want to get people involved, right? You know, I'm like, oh, well, it's a birthday. Champagne. <laughs> you know, excellent. You know, anniversary. Well, champagne. It's a great upsell, definitely. <laughs> I get excited. What are you guys drinking behind the bar? Uh, we're, we're actually drinking Cristal. <laughs> <laughs> that, that worked. Only on New that, Year's. That yeah. worked twice. Yeah. What are you guys having? Exactly. Cristal. Any other questions, comments, observations? Russ? Um, <laughs> getting back to the whole... Um, wrapping it all up, pretty much. Wrapping it all up, pretty much. Uh, to um, the upselling and everything. I, I believe that when people come into your bar, it's almost like going into the zoo. They want to see... They want to have a tour guide, basically, to know where everything is, see all the monkeys and all the animals, or whatever. <laughs> but with bartending, you, they, you want to have all the options available. I'm just sorry for the, the metaphor there. But, um, and you want to basically give them options in the best, most efficient and uh, professional way. I think that, that's professionalism. Because yeah. we're the ones who are supposed to have the knowledge, right? Yeah. Definitely. So present that to them. Any possible way. It's the lingo too. Like I, I find the lingo. Like I'll say something like, um, some people go, "Can you? What would you like to drink?" I go, "How about a nice tasty beverage this evening? How can I start you off? How can I fire you up?" And people are like, "Well, they're not gonna have wire water after you just said something like that." I'm like, 
Let's go. Giddy up. <laughs> They're like, well, I gotta have something now or this guy's gonna freak. <laughs> Give me a bottle of something. <laughs> But it is, it's the lingo, like, right? Absolutely. Before anything else, you can upsell with the lingo because they're coming into your establishment to spend money, right? right. It's just how much okay. can you offer them and want them to spend, you know? Like, it's real easy. If somebody, me especially, I'll go, line it up, fire it up. I don't care how much it costs. If you sell it to me, I'll buy it, like, yeah. you know, and it's all lingo. Because you're out to relax. Feel, yeah. Have a good time. Hey, you want to come to my bar? Yeah. 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 So right. guys come exactly. All of a sudden. Sure. Sash is the best at that because the first thing he does is, yes. we're going to party tonight, aren't we? And there he goes. Yeah. And, and you're yeah. over. It's done. Yeah. And he just keeps it up the whole night. And yeah. Sash, yeah. Sash. yeah. But Sash. he's fabulous at no. that because he just sets right. the mood. We're going to have fun. We're here to have fun. And yeah. this isn't a drag. And he and a couple right. other guys have, have done something else too. They started challenging people, you know, like, um, you know, I'll see you in five minutes. You know, yeah, yeah. There's your round, and I'll see you in five minutes. And people go, five minutes? And you go, yeah, you got five minutes, and I want to see you back here. I do that too. Yeah, same thing. I want to see you back here. You know, that's the deal. Okay, we'll see you in five minutes for your next round. When you're thirsty, I don't care if you're in the very end of the bar. I want you coming to me. All, right? All of a sudden, you got to let them know that you care about them as your customers, right? that you're going to take good care of them. Yeah, yeah, don't let me come find you. That's Dave. All right? For those of you who don't know, Sasha is a bartender of the Roxy, and he's, uh, you know, exceptional. One of the guys that got me into the industry. We talked about him in another video, but, uh, you know, just exceptional personality and, and tr really just takes care of the people, uh, which is wonderful. Um, turn to the next page, 35. Um, I want to talk about some, some numbers, just to go to an example. We, uh, we did a, uh, a consulting for a bar a long time ago, and um, they wanted us to get their staff to, to sell more, plain and simple. Well, their average drinks were about three fifty, three dollars and fifty cents per drink, right? And they were pretty much selling about a thousand dollars a night. I mean, these numbers are, are just ballpark things. So basically, they were selling in a six-hour shift about fifty drinks per hour. Okay. Now they wanted us to get them to sell twenty-five dollars an hour more. All right. Now is that a big dollar figure? When drinks are three fifty an average, it's not that big a deal. It's a very minor thing, right? Now this is the power of suggestive selling. If you do a little bit of an effort, all of a sudden big things can happen. There's a lot of money in this industry. People want to go in and spend their money. You know, they've got 50 bucks in their pocket. They're ready to spend it. Mm -hmm. You just got to guide them into what they're going to buy. Right? Now, with this particular bar, uh, for example, if you're going to suggest to sell doubles, well, you're going to get what is another 75 or 225 more for a double. This is an example. Now, out of 50 drinks an hour, you're selling what another 12 of those. And you're at your $25. Does everybody think that's hard to do, another $25 an hour? I really don't. I mean, it's very, very basic. Right? Uh, if you want to sell premiums, a little bit extra. Shooters are great because shooters are an extra. People don't think of them as a drink. Right? So all of a sudden, you have like eight shooters. All of a sudden, you're at your $25 an hour or more. You know? Especially if you get into uh, your, your, uh, your appetizers or your desserts. So it's very easy to do that. Now, turn to the next page. Give you an example about how much is a difference it could make in your actual sales. Um, if you're doing that, you know, in a shift, that's going to end up being $150 a night. Extra sales that you're making, you know, more than what you were before because you're not trying. Well, if you do that all week long, all of a sudden in a week you're making another $750 a, a week. You know, if you go for a year, it's almost $40,000. I mean, there's some big numbers in here. This is not saying that you're going to go work any harder. Right? You're just going to work smarter. Right? Pay attention. Yeah. There's small numbers too because say you both sold doubles and premiums and shooters, then it's $102 now. I totally agree. No. This is the drop in the bucket. Yeah. I mean, we are there to be servers, right? Not to be order takers, to be salespeople. Right? And it doesn't have to be a dirty word because we're doing it because we care about people and we're guiding them. This is not a used car salesman selling them something that, that's going to break down. You know, people thank us for these kind of things. Michael. And the last equation missing and why someone would hopefully obviously be buying this video to, to, to make more money because we're all about ultimately you're in business to make money, you, you live, uh, I mean money is the bottom line, Right. unfortunately a lot of times in, in, in life. But, but your point is you're talking about um, the next thing, when you talk about four bartenders, that's what makes it powerful. You got four or eight or ten, twelve bartenders, all of a sudden they're all suggestive selling, right? Basically all this means is they're making an effort. You know, they're talking to people and no matter what happens, that's a good thing. They're interacting with the customers. While your sales are going up, 
you know, hopefully if you're taking care of people, you know, tips are great. We're going to talk about that in another video. But hopefully, you know, you're going to get, you know, a bit a better tip on a bigger on a bigger sale. Bottom line, it works. No question, it's easy. It just works, and it is easy, and I do it all the time. And it's especially good to do when you're slower. You know, when you get it into it, and you can do it all online. But even when it's busy, you know, no problem. Make an effort. Really, really make an effort. I guarantee you this will work. It just becomes habit to say it. You have to it's like it. you, yeah. if you start off when it's slower, you you know, okay, are you going to have a double, you know, whatever. And then right. it gets to, like you said, you're busy and it's like, it's a double, right? You yeah. Know, Bacardi. Double, you yeah. Know, you just yeah. automatically Double, God will punish you. Come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> right? Make a joke out of it. Exactly. Have it right there. Present it to them. But, you know, just walk away with some ideas. Like something that you think is going to work for you. Right? There's all sorts of things that won't work. Absolutely, that's a given. But there's a lot of things that will work. So let's pay attention to those. And start asking questions. And start thinking about it. Start telling stories. You know, going to people who have some experience in it and say, well, how do you do it? What do you think is important? Well, you know what I think is important? It's suggestive selling. Absolutely. It's a big, big thing. If you're not doing it, you're not a professional. Any other questions, comments, observations? Well, I tell you, I learned something today. I'm going to go look into that uh, viewfinder thing. Yeah. Yeah. The royalties come to me. <laughs> All you bar owners and bar managers, the kid gets some cash. <laughs> Everybody, thank you, Dave. Thank you for coming. I appreciate the time. Just friendship and handshakes and, and welcome, uh, bringing you into their living room, literally, which we have done the same. Um, always make people feel like they, they've had a great time when they leave. You know, leave them with a memorable experience. Well, in the beginning it was the money, obviously. That's what starts, I think, most people in the business. Um, but what keeps me in the business is just the energy that you have. It's, um, it's a fun business. It's, you're always occupied. You're dealing with people all the time. You're meeting people all the time. It's just, all in all, just a great industry to be in. And it keeps me there. Plus, it pays all right. The trends I've seen have been that uh, there, there is a good trend towards professionalism, towards getting a more polished act, to just a higher quality of product, of service, of uh, just general atmosphere to places where, uh, say, 10, 15 years ago, people uh, were happy with less. And maybe it's just being in this area where there's an incredible quality of service and it's a tough competition. Um, I think it's a great thing for everybody involved, for the professionals who are willing to learn and try and grow and build and make themselves better. And that is, that is competition. And that's what we're all here for. And to, you know, succeed through that. I think that to be an exceptional server, you, um, you have to be very outgoing, different. Uh, a lot of the people that go to the bars are going for entertainment and excitement and they want to be entertained and uh, they're there for a good time to relax, open up and uh, that you have the ability to make them have a great time, spend beyond the money that they have in their pocket to go to their credit card and uh, the options are endless and the fun is just great. It's creating your own atmosphere and environment. You can create the whole room to uh, a big party. If a bartender was to approach uh, myself or as an owner or manager, and this was new to me, this whole concept was to me, uh, a bartender should just tell them, you know what, give me a night behind the bar for a few hours. Let me show you the look and expression on people's, the, the customer, space after I get done serving them. It's not only the flair, it's not only the flip, it's the attitude. It's that handshake, it's that smile, it's that, can I offer you a double, can I tell you about our specials? It's that whole charisma that comes with this course, that comes with the whole extreme bartending philosophy. It's, let me show you what I can do to a customer's attitude. That pretty much wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed making it. Be sure to check out our website. We've got lots of new stuff going up all the time. And if you like what we do, tell your friends about us. We'd really appreciate it. Also, make sure you check out the ads at the end of the video. These are some great companies and they can really help you if you give them a chance. So call them and find out for yourself. I'd like to leave you with three of my favorite quotes and a few thoughts. 
Abraham Lincoln said, I don't think much about a man who doesn't know more tomorrow than he did today. Michael Jordan said, I can accept failure. Everybody fails sometimes, but I can't accept not trying. And Wayne Gretzky said, I miss 100% of the shots that I don't take. So bottom line, care enough about what you do to think about how to do it better. And be proactive. Go out there and make something happen in your life. But above all, enjoy your life, because you never know how long you've got. Who wants to play golf? Smart now brings you a sensational six-week program. You'll learn everything you need to know about serving drinks with style. <laughs> with step-by-step -step and slow motion instruction, you'll learn easily, quickly and properly, so you won't spool the profits or break everything in sight. This is a business and great bartenders do more than just take orders. So create excitement and increase your sales revenue with the Extreme Bartending Video Training Series. Our three videos with over 240 moves in all is a must for bartenders everywhere. No matter what level of bartender you are now, if you follow our program, you'll increase your odds for success because you'll make an impact on every customer you ever serve. Think about it. If you don't entertain your customers, someone else will. Because in this highly competitive industry, you can't just expect high sales and big tips. You've got to earn them. So you can have a lot of fun with it. You can make more money for your bar, make more money for yourself. And if you do it properly, it's a win-win-win situation for everybody. gives a little spark to people's lives. I think the world's starving for entertainment. Cocktail the movie. That was great. It was a really good beginning. But, uh, that was 1988. Hopefully by now we've taken it further. Look out!